Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can host your Discord bots so they're up and running 24 7 for server owners to use. So, in order to do this, we do have to have our own VPS. And if you already have a VPS, you can use the YouTube player to select the next timestamp. But if you don't have a VPS, then what you want to do is head over to warnoffkeys.com forward slash VPS. This includes a four minute long video explaining how you can get your own VPS in a step by step fashion. And this video does offer $100 in free credit for your VPS for up to 30 days. That way you can follow along with this tutorial for free. But the rest of the video will assume you already have a VPS up and running, whether that is one you already had or one through warnoffkeys.com forward slash VPS. And this link can be found in the description as well as the pinned comments. So once you already have a VPS set up, Using Vulture, you should look something like this. And I've already used my information here to go ahead and log in using Bitvice. And if you already had a VPS and you logged in with something like Putty and FileZilla, that's perfectly fine, as long as you're able to actually log into your VPS. And one last note before we get started, if you're brand new to Linux, I do have a complete Linux crash course. It's a 10 minute long YouTube video and a link to that will be down in the description. So now we're ready to actually move forward and upload our bots and get it up and running. So here I'm in the terminal and I wanna make a new folder that's going to hold all of our bots files such as these. So I'm gonna say make dir space bot. And if I use ls, we see the bot directory is made right here. I can also refresh on Bitvice and we now see the bot directory right here. We can double click to navigate into there. And with Bitvice, we can simply drag our files over but we do not want to upload node modules because typically this is a very large folder. And I'll show you how you can get node modules onto your VPS in a few minutes without actually having to upload it. So we're gonna click all of these. We're going to drag them over into the right panel here. And this is going to upload them. If I navigate into the bot directory and I use LS, we now see all of our files here. So one problem we have if you followed the previous video is that we wrote our code in TypeScript when in reality, we want to be running it in JavaScript. So if you do have a bot made in JavaScript, then go ahead and use the YouTube player to skip to the next timestamp. But if you do have a bot made in TypeScript, I'm now gonna show you how you can compile that into JavaScript before uploading. it. So let's go over to VS Code, and let's go ahead and open up a new terminal by going to Terminal and then New Terminal. I'm going to use Control L to clear this. Now we need to install TypeScript as a dev dependency. So I can say npm, install dash capital D TypeScript. And if we open up our package.json file, this is gonna add TypeScript as a dev dependency right here. The next step is to edit our scripts. So we're going to add a new script. So we can add a comma to the end of the existing test script. And this script will be called TSC, which stands for TypeScript compiler. We can then add in TSC dash W dash dash skip lib check. And if I save this, we can now run this as a script to compile all of our TypeScript files into JavaScript files. So I can go back to the terminal and I can do npm run TSC. It then says starting compilation in watch mode, found zero errors, watching for file changes. So this right here comes from this dash W flag, which essentially means this process will stay open and will continuously compile our TypeScript into JavaScript files. As we see right here, we now have a JavaScript file and this code isn't really readable, but it is optimized for performance. We see some recognizable code here when it comes to our actual bot. And all of this code does the same exact functionality as our TypeScript code, but now it is in JavaScript. So this is the file we actually want to run. So typically I would just leave this running whenever I'm developing things. It will automatically update things. For example, if I see the bot is ready right here and I add in a couple of exclamation points and I save it, we see that this changed. And if I go into index.js, we now see the new exclamation points right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those and then save this again. And now we want to upload our index.js file onto our server. So if I go over here, I can move index.js. Now, if I go back to my bot, I use ls, and now we see index.js. So now we're ready to actually run our bot. But if I use the node command, we see that it's not found because node.js is not automatically installed. Now you could install Node.js with this, but we don't wanna do this in this exact use case because this installs Node.js version 12 as of recording this video. And when using Discord JS version 13, we need version 16.6. So I found this simple tutorial online 
This is going to teach you how to actually install Node.js version 16.6. This way we can easily copy and paste the commands. A link to this can be found in the description down below. So I'm simply going to copy this, I'm going to go over to my terminal and right click to paste. Then I'm going to go back and select the next command, I'm going to copy it and right click to paste. That command took a few seconds to run, that's normal. And then we have this final command here where we're actually installing Node.js. So we can right click this and paste it in. Now that it's done, I can use Control L to clear this and I can use Node V. And it's going to show version 16.8. Yours might be different depending on when you're watching this video, but as long as you have 16.6 or higher, you're good to go. So now we can run our bot with Node index.js, but we immediately get this error saying cannot find module discord.js because our actual node module files are not on this VPS, because as I mentioned earlier, it's a very large folder, and so we do not want to manually upload it. If we go back into VS Code, into our package.json file, we see all of our dependencies are stored right here. So we can actually use a command, which is just npm install, and this will install all of the dependencies mentioned in your package.json file. So now if I use ls, we see our node module folder is right here. So now we're going to actually run our bot with node index.js. And we now see the bot is ready. If I go into Discord, we see that this is now online. So we're not running this at all inside of our local terminal. The only thing we're doing here is compiling TypeScript. And so our bot is now running successfully from our VPS. But this is not actually the end goal. Because if we close this terminal right now, this process will end. So there's more steps involved. And that's basically going to be running our node project as a background process. So whether our computer is off or this terminal is closed, the bot will continue to run. I can use control C to terminate this. And now we need to install something known as PM2, which is a process manager. And this is going to allow our bot to run in the background, even if we're not connected to our server in this way. So to do this, we can say npm install dash G to make this a global dependency. We can then say PM2. So now I'm going to go ahead and start a bot using PM2. I can say PM2 start index.js. And this creates this little table here where we have an ID, which is important to note, the name, which is index. We have our status, which is online. This right here doesn't actually display a character for me, but this is how many times the bot has been restarted. This is important to note for later on in the video. Here we have our CPU usage and our memory usage. So I can view all the running processes at any time with PM2 list. I can restart a process with PM2 restart and then an ID, in this case, zero. And now we see this right here has been increased to one because our process has restarted once. I can stop a process with PM2 stop zero, zero being the ID. And here we see the status is stopped. I can start this up again with PM2 start zero. And I can delete an entire process with PM2 delete zero. So now there's no longer any processes running. If I use PM2 list, nothing is there. So in order to have our bot up and running again, we can do PM2 start index.js. And now we have a new process and our bot is still online. One last thing for PM2 is we can do PM2 logs and then an ID. And here we're going to see all the logs for a certain process. You can use control C to exit this. And now you're back into the normal terminal. And if you really wanted to, you could stop here and just manually upload your files onto the server. But there's a much easier way that's going to automatically deploy your changes whenever you're done with them. So let's go back over to Chrome. And I'm going to create a new GitHub repository for this project. If you don't have a GitHub account, just simply go to github.com. All accounts are free. GitHub is an industry standard for practically every developer when it comes to a concept known as version control, which allows us to actually keep track of different changes in our software and allows us to easily collaborate with other developers. So even if you're just making your own bot for fun, I highly encourage you to use GitHub because there's a lot of benefits to it. So under repositories, I can click on new. I'm going to name this DJS v13. And I'm going to make this a private repository so no one else has access to this. I can then click on create repository. And now we have all these commands here that we can run. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we have access to git bash. So this is going to be a terminal for Windows that will actually give you access to GitHub. And you can go to git-scm.com to go ahead and download this. 
This is a standard installer. Although there is a bunch of default options, you can just spam the next button and then you're good to go. So I already have this installed. And if I go into VS Code, I can use Control-C to stop this. And if I say Git here, there's actually an error. And so we need a way to make it so we can run Git Bash within our terminal. So I'm gonna use the trash can here to close this. And now I'm going to say Control Shift P. This will open up this menu here where we can run different VS Code commands. You wanna type in select default profile and you wanna click on this option right here. You then want to select Git Bash. And if you don't see it after installing Git Bash, you might have to restart VS Code. Once I selected it, I can now open a new terminal. And our terminal looks different because we're now using Git Bash. So if I say Git, we now have actual useful commands and a help menu, so everything is working. I can use Control L to clear this. And now we want to set up our project to be on a GitHub repository. So the first thing I want to do is git init. And we also want to make sure that certain things are not pushed to our GitHub repository. If I say git status, this will show all the files that are ready to be pushed. We have our .env file, which holds our token, so we do not want to push that to GitHub ever. We also have node modules, which is a large folder, and we never want to push that to GitHub as well. So how do we actually ignore these files? In our workspace here, we can make a new file called .gitignore, all one word, all lowercase. And in here, we can just simply add in the names of the folders and the files that we want to ignore, such as .env and node modules. Now, if I save this and I run the same command in our terminal, we no longer see .env or node modules, so everything is good to go. Going back onto GitHub, we now have other commands we want to run. We've already ran init, and now we want to add all of our files. And in this example, it's saying to add a readme. In our use case, we just want to add all of our remaining files. So I can simply say git add star. Alternatively, you could add individual files, but I just typically say git add star. And now if I use git status, we see that all of these are in green. That means that they're ready to actually be pushed. Now here, git ignore is not automatically added. I do like to include this on my repositories because if a coworker is working on a project with me and they go to pull that repository, they then get access to the git ignore file so they don't have to actually add one themselves and they're not accidentally pushing their token or their node modules. So I can say git add dot git ignore. And now if I say git status, now everything is in green. The next command is going to be git commit dash m first commit. And the first commit is the actual message here that is going to describe what was changed on this commit. First commit is a common message when it comes to the very first commit, obviously. So we can go back, I can use control L, and I can say git commit dash M, first commit. Now if I use git status, we don't actually see anything here because everything's already committed. We now have to push that, but we have to tell it exactly where it's going to. So we can go back and these last three commands, we can actually just copy and paste. So I'm gonna go back into VS Code, I'm gonna right click to paste that. Next, we have this long command here. And obviously yours will look different. This is just your GitHub name as well as the repository name that you used. So I can go back and I can paste this in here. And then finally, we can copy this push command and this will actually push it to our repository. Now it might ask you for a username and password here, in my case, it's gonna ask me for a passphrase for an SSH key, basically a similar concept, just making sure we actually have the ability to push to this repository. So go ahead and enter your information, and then you can use git status. And it's going to say your branch is up to date with origin main, nothing to commit, working tree is clean. This means that everything is now pushed to GitHub. And if we go back into GitHub and we refresh, we now see a different page with all of our files. Now that our code is on our GitHub repository, we want a way for this code to be automatically deployed onto our VPS. This is where buddy.works comes in. You can go ahead and sign up for free. And you want to make sure that you use your GitHub account to sign up. I already have an account, so I'm simply going to log in. Now, when you create an account with GitHub, it's gonna ask you to link a repository. You want to make sure that you select your repository that you created here. In this case, mine is DJS version 13 tutorial. Yours might be different. You might also be prompted to create a new project. I just named mine Discord.js version 13. If I click on this, it's now gonna ask us to make a new pipeline. So we can go ahead and click this. And a pipeline is basically what is going to connect our GitHub to our VPS. So for the name, I'm going to call this tutorial. 
We want this to trigger whenever something is pushed. So we're going to select on push. We can then click on add a new pipeline. Now, if you sign up with Vulture as your VPS hosting, like I mentioned in the other video, then we can easily integrate Vulture with Buddy by typing in Vulture here. And here we have a simple integration. Now you might be prompted to add in an integration. Here I have to add in a new integration. So you might see a screen similar to this one. So we can simply click to add a new Vulture integration. The integration name will just be tutorial. You can name yours, whatever. And then you can click on generate token right here. You can go ahead and copy your API key. And you can also refresh your API key, which I'll do at the end of this video. You can also allow all IPv4 addresses. This will make it so that buddy.works website will have actual access to your Vulture account. So going back, we can paste this in and add a new integration. And now we see the integration right here. The source path is fine to stay as default. If you do have a subfolder for your source code, you might want to change this to that by clicking on browse. But if you follow the previous Discord JS tutorial, then just a simple forward slash as default is fine. Scrolling down, we have our server. Our port should be 22. We can go back and we can copy our root password and we can paste it in here. We now want to select our remote path for where the bot should actually live. In this case, it's my bot folder. And of course, if you named your folder something else earlier in the video, then you would select that folder instead. Make sure delete files on server is on. This will just make sure everything is synced up with your local project and your actual VPS. So if you delete a file on your local project, maybe you don't need a command anymore and you push that to GitHub, buddy.works will see that and it's going to automatically delete that command on your actual VPS as well. So it just makes sure that everything is synced up correctly. We can then click on add this action. And now we want to add in an SSH command to restart our process. So if I do PM2 list, we see our process is zero. And in my case, this has been restarted three times. Yours might be different, but keep note of this number. We can go back and say PM2 restart zero as the command. We now need to enter all the information for our VPS. We can copy this. We can paste it in here. The port is 22. The login is root. We can go back and copy our root password and we can paste it in here. So scrolling down, we can now click on add this action. And now we can simply just click on pipelines and we see that this has not been ran yet. So if I go into Discord and I type in ping, we see that it replies with Pong. I'm going to go into VS Code and we want to change this where I want to add in three exclamation points. And if I open a new terminal, we first need to make sure that this is compiled into JavaScript. So I can do npm run TSC and I can actually let this run in the background and make a new terminal for git bash. And now we have two of them that we can switch between. One will constantly be compiling TypeScript and the other one is where we can actually run our commands without interrupting the TypeScript service. So I can say git status. We see two files have changed. git add star, git commit dash m, testing deployment. And then finally, git push. You will have to enter in your login information. Now, if I go back over to buddy.works, we see that this is automatically refreshing because it detected the change. And of course, if I refresh on GitHub, we see that 19 seconds ago, these two files were changed. So going back over to buddy.works, it says the push has happened just now. If I go back into our console, I can do PM2 list. And if you remember, this was restarted three times for me previously. Now it's restarted four. And if I go over to Discord, I can type in ping. And it now replies with Pong with three exclamation points. So that was all because we pushed to GitHub right here. Buddy.works automatically detected that, pulled the changes, deployed it to our VPS, and automatically restarted. So now you have GitHub with version control, so you can keep track of changes and also collaborate with other developers. And you have automatic deployments, so your code has been automatically deployed to your VPS using Buddy.works. Thanks for watching the video. If you want access to video source code, as well as early access to future tutorials, consider clicking on the join button down below the video to support the channel.